sounds bad at all on this little tiny zero. Everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today we have two suppressors to review today from Griffin Armament, the Dualock 5 and the Dualock 7. So as you probably guessed, the 5 is going to be the 5.56 size bore aperture and the 7 is going to be the 7.62 bore size aperture. So two different cans for two different series of hosts and we're going to cover them in detail here in the studio and then hit the range as usual. It's very fun to be a front runner here on a new product release. Uh, I got these about two weeks before the release. So if you're seeing this video, uh, it's go time, but this is a brand new product from Griffin Armament and I'm excited to share it with you guys today. Uh, I've actually already shot them, spoiler alert, and they did really well. So we're kind of filming in reverse this time uh, just because my schedule did not allow me to film here in the studio prior to the range. So they did do very well. But let's go ahead and cover the specs first here in the studio. And then of course we'll hit the range and you guys can hear just how they do. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, since we are doing two suppressors in one video, just keep that in mind when we do the specs. So starting with the five, it comes in at a overall length of 6.5 inches with a weight of 11.8 ounces. And then the seven comes in a overall length of, you guessed it, seven inches even with an overall weight of 12.6 ounces. Now, both of them, of course, are gonna have the same diameter of 1.5 inches and then everything else, of course, is the same as well. So I'll just hold the seven here. The materials are gonna be uh, 17 4 heat treated stainless steel and Inconel and the suppressor body itself is uh, H900 heat treated for hardness and then of course the finish on both is going to be a high temperature black Cerakote looks really good in person feels good in the hands now as far as metering averages we'll go back to the 556 you know it's kind of going to be the worst case scenario uh, 556 is a real pain in the butt to get down to acceptable levels uh, just because of the pressure of the round and the host that you're going to be shooting it on. So with the five, they have a factory tested on a 11.5 inch barrel with 55 grain Hornady at 135.60 decibels at the muzzle and 137.49 at the shooter's ear. Now going up, same ammo, but up to a 16 inch barrel they have it metered at the muzzle at 134.01 at the muzzle again, and then at the ear, 134.55. So long story short, on an SBR, it's gonna be hearing safe, and of course, even quieter on a 16 inch barrel, which we will be shooting today. We're gonna to be shooting it on a 10 and a half, 11 and a half, and a 16 inch just in the 5.56, as well as 300 blackout and 308 on this guy. So very comprehensive review on these two suppressors today. All right, now that we have these specs out of the way, let's go ahead and cover the special features and then we will hit that range. So, elephant in the room is gonna be the dual lock, okay? This is where the entire suppressor gets its name from. Now, this is a proprietary system built into this new model, meaning if you want universal capability with universal thread pitch here on the back, you need to look at other suppressors in their line like the Bushwhacker 36 that I just reviewed. That also makes your suppressor heavier, bigger, more cumbersome. So this is gonna be your streamline, more specific duty suppressor line here. So with the dual lock, I, don't, I forget if I've covered this before, but we'll just go ahead and cover it today. You have a taper lock mounting system, okay? And I'll show you here on this. Uh, this is a M16 lower with an 11 half inch upper with the rifle speed gas system here. Uh, I did not adjust that during unsuppressed and suppressed fire and the gun ran just fine, meaning the baffle stack did not overrun it. We'll cover that in a second. So you have a taper mount that you cannot see inside the suppressor body that mounts to and corresponds with the taper on the muzzle device. And then you have the Acme threads behind it. And then you have a secondary lock behind that. That's where it gets its name, the dual lock. So to use it, you literally just screw the suppressor on, okay? Finger tight there, you'll feel the taper and the suppressor mount with the taper uh, on the muzzle device, okay? And then you can technically shoot it just like this. Just give it a little snug touch there and you can shoot it just 
like that, it's not going to loosen. Okay. If you want to add a secondary lock to it, just drop that ring and now it's not going to go anywhere. Trust me, it is not going to back off. Again, I already shot these and they did very well and they are hard to get off. Okay. If you wrench it on when you're engaging those taper surfaces. So just keep that in mind. Just, just put it on just enough. Don't, don't put it on and go, Ugh, all right, that's not going anywhere because it's not going to go anywhere and you're not going to be able to move it to other hosts while you're at the range, even after a cool down. Okay. Cause when those metal surfaces expand, you know, the hot mount with the hot can against that taper surface and those Acme threads pulling them onto each other. Good luck to you. So, uh, basically, in a nutshell, how it works is you'll see these splines here on the mount. Now, this is not a ratchet uh, mount system, okay? You probably didn't hear any ratcheting sounds when I put it on. That's because it's not. Ratchets have wear items. This is a non-wear item suppressor. If you look here on the front, and I'll show you a tight shot, you'll see one, two, three little teeth that will engage in the female slots here on the teeth here on the mount, okay? Now, because you have so many degrees of movement when you put this on and you go to unlock the collar from neutral, okay? If you can see this collar, it means it's unlocked. You compress this flat spring and you move it to the next position. You'll get a false lock there. You see how it's not flush with the back of the collar? Just go to the other side, okay? There's two sections where it could fall into. There it goes. And now it's locked. So you want this collar to be flush with the rear of your muzzle device and you want this flat spring to be fully extended and you're good to go. It's not going anywhere. Okay, to remove it, use these indicator pins right here that you can see that are pressed into the collar. That's gonna kind of give you an indication of where the pin is to set on the lock, neutral, lock notches of the collar. Compress, rotate, boom. It's in the neutral position, the collar is exposed, you can now remove the suppressor. It's literally that simple, pretty user friendly, very intuitive to use, and when you see a close-up shot, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when you can see that pin engage on the neutral shelf, and then you have the two notches cut out for locking position one, locking position two. So, pretty easy there on the mount. While we're on it, let's cover the tube. So it's a tubeless design, so that's gonna give you less weight, max volume, and of course, this is their EcoFlow baffle stack that they've been developing for a long time. And from what I gathered, the Eco stack in the five is not the same as the Eco stack in the seven, okay? They didn't just widen the bore aperture and add a little length to it to adapt it to a 30 caliber bore aperture, okay? The porting inside is different, and that's because on a 30 caliber version, you're going to experience a different caliber range of host. Okay, you're going to have 300 blackout, you know, 308, 65 Creedmoor, stuff like that, even 556. Whereas on the 556, well, you're just shooting 556 out of it. So the, the porting inside is different, but the end result is the same. Eco flow means exactly that. They want it to flow nice and smooth out while maximizing the best balance of numbers they can get at the muzzle and at the ear while also not overrunning your bolt carrier group and inducing malfunctions while you're shooting. So it's like a ballet. There's a lot of balance there. Everything has to be perfect when, especially when shooting on the AR-15 platform, especially when they start to get fouled up. You don't want your suppressor to just be beating that bolt carrier group back every time and causing malfunctions. So again, recap, less back pressure, less port pop and a smoother running gun. Now that brings us to our final topic for the studio is the flash hider. You'll see these three vents here. Now those are kind of like a dual purpose. One purpose is of course that is part of the EcoFlow baffle to get that pressure out of the gun to not overrun it. And this actually they found during their R&D, it helps disrupt the gas flow at the front of the suppressor during that first shot. Because remember when you have first round pop, all this oxygen in the suppressor is still burning and it's going to burn that gunpowder all the way to the end and on a rifle suppressor because of the heat and the pressure at play here you usually get a very tight fine two two and a half inch jet out the front not a big deal to us but if you're behind enemy lines you're using these overseas something like that 
at night, even without night vision, you're going to see this flash from miles away, that nice, clean, bright, hot jet. So what they did is they developed this to help disrupt that gas in conjunction with this flash hider end cap, and it negates that first round flash and subsequent flashes out the front of the can. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, well, I think that covers it. We covered the baffle stack, specs, the mount, I don't want to bore you to death here in the studio. Let's grab a plethora of hosts. We're going to shoot a 10 and a half inch 5.56, a 11 and a half inch 5.56, a 16 inch 5.56. I wanted to give you the gambit of the 5.56 barrel range there. And of course, we're going to shoot 300 blackout and 308 as well on the 7. So let's go ahead and hit the range and get to it. Before we get shooting, a quick word from our sponsor, Capital Armory. They're the nation's largest silencer dealer and have expanded their silencer shipping ability to multiple states, with even more on the way. They can still ship directly to Texas residents, but they can now deliver silencers directly to your door for those in many other states. The process is simple and keeps everything in-house. So there are no additional dealers, transfer fees, or headaches. They manage the entire process from start to finish to make your life easier. The process is very simple. Once you purchase a silencer online through their website, you'll be contacted to begin your online customer profile to provide them with fingerprints and other necessary information to complete your e-file form four. After the ATF approves your form, Capital Armory will initiate electronic transfer paperwork with you and your silencer will be mailed directly to your front door. And the best part is, your customer profile only needs to be done once, so you'll be ready to go for all future orders. Head to CapitalArmory.com today to learn more. Bounce bad at all on this little tiny barrel. Damn impressive, dude. Like, really. that all day without ears for sure. Not shoot the deal. Dude, that sounds great. I could shoot that all day. That's pretty wild. It is. Take out your foamies. Dude, sounds like a squirrel farted. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna 
shoot the steel. Hot and ready. Body. Don't hit the steel. It's too. It's too loud. Hardwood. God, that sounds crazy over here. That's awesome, dude. Whew. I hope you guys and thoroughly enjoyed this review. It is, I think the heat index is 102 and humidity is set to swimming pool. It is disgusting out here. So luckily I've had Jameson out here to help me uh, load mags and get through all this because we had a lot of shooting to do today guys. We had, uh, you know, 5.56 five, and uh, 308 and 300 blackout and Jameson's about to shoot the MP5 in the background. <laughs> Um, so, um, some, some, uh, thoughts here. <laughs> so some thoughts on the suppressors. Most noticeable thing when shooting the short barrels that we shot the profile view, I didn't shoot those down, uh, back here at, you know, 88 yards or whatever we're at here. Um, because it seemed too redundant. So I just decided to shoot the 16 inch down here. Plus it was too hot to move it from host to host. <laughs> so what I took away from it was that venting in the end cap really did a good job of A, not overgassing the shooter, B, not getting port pop, and C, not overrunning the gun. So reliability on the weapon platform was good. No port pop, I could shoot it without ears on just fine with a 10 and a half inch and an 11 and a half inch barrel, which is extremely rare these days with a 5.56 five, 
caliper specific can, usually because you get too much back pressure. Uh, so that was actually surprising. Uh, and every scene off camera, Jameson was about in line with the microphone on the camera, just out of frame. And he had the same opinion that I do. It sounds really good on the short barrel. Sounds great on the 16 inch. Um, so 556, five, good. 300 blackout, obviously is gonna sound downright magical when it's suppressed. There's, you know, we kind of expected that. What I didn't expect is just how magical it was gonna sound because it sounded like it was a high volume 762 can, you know, like a CGS group Hyperion, where it has a like really low tone, that thump thump sound. It had the same tone profile in a can that's like half its diameter and length, you know what I mean? It's this is a this is a suppressor that you can put on an AR-10, okay? Or you can shoot the 30 cal on the 5.56, which we didn't do today. Um, and you're not gonna add a lot of overall length and unwieldiness, okay? A lot of uh, weight on the end of your barrel. So it was performing like a larger volume 30 caliber can, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, on the Bolt Gun 308 here, you could shoot it all day without ears in, 100%, sounded great. Very, very, very low tone, very pleasing. Uh, it did improve recoil, I noticed, and I reviewed some of the footage here when we were shooting. We, we've had some on and off cloud coverage, so it's some of the shots I can see if there's gonna be muzzle flash and jetting out of the front of the suppressor. I didn't really see any, um, so that little flash hider that they machined into the front is doing its job. So, as far as complaints, my only takeaway here, as far as I would say manual of arms here, of, of use of the suppressor, is do not wrench it on, okay? Like, meaning like super tighten it. Just because of the taper lock design that those forces pulling against each other when those Acme threads engage, right? You have one taper surface in the suppressor, one on the mount, all right? And when they tighten, right, like this, they're really holding that can on there. And when it heats up and expands when you're shooting, it locks that sucker on there to the point to where it was hard for us to get it off in between scenes. We had to cool it down for quite a bit. Uh, we even had to pour some, some drank on it. So uh, my biggest advice there is just almost loose. Just put it on there just where you feel that taper engage and then uh, you know, activate the locking ring, you're good to go. It's not going to go anywhere. So less is more with this mounting system. Um, it took us quite a while off camera to get it off of this 300 blackout. Uh, we really had to wrench it off with our hands, let it cool down. I mean, it took like 15 minutes. So just don't tighten it too much. Just kind of throw it on there, lock ring, you're good to go. It's not going to come off. Other than that, sound profile was great from the side. Sound profile was great down range. I love the mount. I think it's great that they came out with a dual lock suppressor without having to use adapters like on the Bushwhacker because not only is it more simplistic, you have less weight, there's less going on, it looks cleaner. This, these are definitely keepers for sure. Um, as far as shooting sub calibers through it, I'm sure the 30 cal sounds just as great on the 5.56. We just kind of ran out of time today and the cans are way too hot to swap them right now. So. Uh, maybe we can visit that in a later video, or actually, Griffin Armament is going to be coming to Suppress Fest 2022, so I am sure they will run their 30 caliber dual lock on a 5.56 there, so if you guys are going out to Suppress Fest, just request that, and I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige. So uh, yeah, without further ado, if you haven't checked out Suppress Fest, head to SuppressFest.com. Tickets are, I think we have 12 tickets left for day one so hurry the hell up if you want to go on saturday and day two we have like 110 tickets on sunday november 13th so check that out got the hats coming in we're going to have some colored ones coming in as well so that's going to be cool stay tuned for that they're going to be available at the event only as well as new event shirts so that's going to be pretty dope so guys i hope you enjoyed the video uh it was certainly fun to come out here thank you for trusting me to bring these reviews to you guys and thanks to all my Patreon members, you guys really do help a lot more than you think because uh, this ammo out here is not cheap to keep uh, blowing through. So click that like and subscribe button, guys. We have a lot of videos. I'm talking I am busy between now and like 2023, halfway through the year, completely booked with suppressed reviews. So let's go ahead and get to it.
We need a body armor light sponsor on the channel for, for moving us suppressors from host to host. Armor light. <laughs> <laughs> 